Text somebody. Text but somebody. Bert Hole. Bert Hole. All right, here we go. The, Good for you. <laughs> the uh, thing is running. We're recording. And it begins in three, two, one. Tonight on TMS PM, Mendoza ain't so tough. The equalizer is awesome. NYC mayor killed a beaver. Oh, do not eat those noodles. Bieber got a little hurt. Smuggler had turtles everywhere. The Twitter questions, rather your Twitter questions, and more on this episode of the Morning Stream, PM edition, PM, PM. This is the Morning Stream, but it's not in the morning, it's at night. In the Utah... Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the morning stream, PM edition. It means it's Thursday, and it means you, dear listener, have belly up to the bar, and you've helped us uh, be here because you're doing a Patreon thing, and that helps us stay at a level that helps us have a fifth show each week. Mm-hmm. Hot damn! It's a lot of helping in that uh, in that statement, right? And I'm grateful help for that. Help this and help that. Helpity, helpity, help. Helper, schmelper. Uh, Brian, it's over there. As I'm over here, I'm Scott, and we're here. We're doing it. <laughs> we got our handle on it. Everything's fine. Yes. Brian. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Let's get started real quick with a tale, an update, if you will, okay. of my run-ins with Mendoza. With the Mendoza. He's a, uh, he's a goose. He's trouble. By the mm-hmm. way, uh, wanted posters for Mendoza going up on the Frog Pants store soon. <laughs> Very inexpensive. Also, uh, hey, you Patreon uh, people, expect a new a Mendoza free avatar coming your way. So watch for that. But here's the update. Here's me today. Checking him out. Hey, dude. Hey. (laughs) Come here. Where are you going? Uh, So taking off, getting in the water. Now they're leaving. So brave. Yeah, that was the end of it. Now, (laughs) hold on, hold on, hold on. Just to be clear, you're the one saying, "Hey, you." Yeah, that was me saying, "Hey, you." The bird said. Every time I said it. But listen how quickly he responds. It's been dead quiet till I walk up there, and then I, then he talks. Here, like, Hey, dude. Right there. Hey. That. He says, when, only when I speak does it freak out. That is a horrible noise, by it's the way, that that hideous. creature makes. So he took off and wouldn't hang around. Now, the best part about me filming that on the dock today mm-hmm. was uh, I was out for a run. I thought, well, I'll check. And all the ducks, as usual, were all surrounding the big jerk. And uh, I got up close to him and did all my thing and talked in that video. But all the while, out of the corner of my eye, I see a fisherman walking my direction. And I'm thinking, is he like coming to talk to me? Is he irritated by my daily coming out did here he trying to find a, a bird? Did he have a hook for a hand? <laughs> no. Okay, good. No. I didn't see what he did last summer. It's fine. <laughs> so he came. That's the guy, right? With the hook that's on his hand? Guy. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, so he comes over, just slowly comes over to the dock. And I, the whole time I'm going, oh, no, oh, no. He's going to, like, throw me in or he's going <laughs> to say, what do you, why do you keep bugging these birds or, you know, something. Exactly. I've been watching you. Yeah, because I really did think I was in trouble. Um, <laughs> and he walked right up onto the dock and I'm, I'm pretending like I'm not noticing him I'm looking at my phone as I post this video but, <laughs> sure. my, but I'm peripheral visioning him walk behind me so I see where he's going Yeah. he pauses right behind me and I now can't see him but he's directly behind me and uh, I'm thinking oh no this is it and not only that I've let my guard down and I can't guard against whatever this guy's going to do next Right. I, I kind of turn just a little bit it kind of scared, right? Just a little bit, and I see him uh, threading some sort of new hook on his on his uh, thing, and then he was going to go walk away and go fish. Oh god! I know, but I was freaking out for a minute, <laughs> and then he yelled, "Want to go bird hunting this weekend?" No, he didn't say that. <laughs> uh, it's anyway. too bad if he did. He's ah uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Start with this one right here. Then he then he tore off his clothes and yelled, "Bird <laughs> man!" All right, he didn't do that. He didn't know that. Life's a joke. Shit, man. All right, that party did. He attacked me yeah, from yeah. the rear. And yeah, that was, that was actual recording. Yeah, that yeah. was actual uh, video. So anyway, Mendoza's just a punk, and he ran away from me today, and I don't understand now. Now he's not so tough? What, that there weren't enough uh, ducks surrounding right, me from have, the rear? Or oh, what? you don't have any of your goons to help uh, protect you, do you? Yeah. 
I mean, you know, whatever. I've, I, I've, I'm coming. I'm starting to think I've got the power here, so maybe I need to just rise up and take this into my own hands. We'll see. I'll report, uh, you know, next time I'm out there. Let you guys know what's going on. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. A reminder, though, we got a, we got something to support here. Uh, that AIE Guild Hall at BlizzCon, that thing don't pay for itself. Let me tell you right. what. If right. we want to have that thing this year, and I'm not in charge of this at all, but I have very close friends who are officers in our guild who are running all of this. And so dutifully do so all year round for the guild who are trying to drum up some cash and we're going to help them out. And here's how we're going to do it. There is a gaming marathon that's coming up soon. Let me pull up the dates. I was going to have that written here and I it's forgot. End of October. End I of October. That is correct. Uh, October. No, for early October. Sorry. Fourth of October. Oh, oh, oh. I thought it was the 25th. Okay. Noon to midnight. That's Eastern Daylight Time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then over here would be what? Eight to. No, no, no. <laughs> No, that'd be nine. Wait, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 a.m. to two in the morning. Right. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, and they're going to have this AIE Guild online game a thon. I'm part of this. So at a certain time, I come in and I play a bunch of Diablo. One of you could be a lucky player with me. Go to frogpants.com slash store and you can buy a ticket in to, to being on my little team there. and We can play together. Um, they're frog pants, all stars and people being pl uh, playing all day. They've got all kinds of time slots filled with people. Uh, Ralph, the poor soul, is going to be there mm -hmm. most of this thing. And uh, this is how we pay for things like web hosting and stuff like, oh, I don't know, the Guild Hall at BlizzCon 2014. Right. So here's here's a little bit of an issue. Now, next weekend, the same day as this gaming marathon, yeah. is the Great American Beer Fest. Ah. Which for me, my session, the session I have tickets to, yeah. is uh, from noon until 4 p.m. Okay. So smack dab in early afternoon, which means my night is free. However, that is going to be a night that I will be uh, coming off of four hours <laughs> of better, dude. nonstop beer drinking. No, this is good. We want you to go on your little beer fest and then come and play <laughs> drunk. You don't have any idea how bad I want that. I want, I want that more than anything right now. Well, and... and Dear I'm, Santa. So far, I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so All far, right. I'm okay with that, and I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Um, we have to check with Corinne because she and Jason are going to be here. Oh, right. Because they're coming out for Beer Fest. Right. And if they are cool with me taking an hour of uh, of not being a very good host time <laughs> and in doing this, like, like I'm going to be a really good host, like the, the whole rest of the time, yeah, I'm yeah. going to be this, you know. Be worthless. Susie Homemaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll bet, I'll bet they everyone. are, but we'll check with them. We'll make sure. But I think that's if, a brilliant idea. If that's the case, I am happy to do it. I am All happy right. to contribute mm. in whatever way. And I don't know what game people are going to want to play mm. with uh, El Drunko. But, uh, well, El Drunko, <laughs> I would play any game with you when you're drunk. <laughs> it's very exciting, and it's all going to be great. Um, and you don't, you know... If you just want to help AIE, it's just a great way to do it. I want you to go to aie-guild.org and read the the uh, top post on there, and uh, get filled in on what's happening. All right, it's a it's a great cause, and, I, and we want to see that thing continue. Brian, you found a list. I did. Gizmodo had it. This talks about Netflix stuff that's going away that's soon, right. and I'm yes. terrified. I don't even want to know what this is. So, what are we losing in the next? Uh, well, so soon? the list officially is called the 20 best movies and TV shows disappearing from Netflix next month. No. So, yeah, there are some in here that people, if they want to see them, better hurry up. Uh, for example, if you're binge-watching Battlestar Galactica, the new, oh, the new Battlestar. The, new, the newer one, not the old uh -huh. one, the not Lauren Green or any of that. You're talking about the new right. one. I'm talking about the new one. Oh, with, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, Katie Sackhoff yeah. and uh, yeah, the red lady. Lucy Lawless. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hurry up, watch that. <laughs> oh, yeah, hurry up and watch it, because by, by the time it's done, you'll be saying things in your house like, it's coming from the fracking ship! <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's bad news, but uh, what else are we losing? Uh, we got Barefoot in the Park, yeah. Blue Chips, Brom Stoker's Dracula, the yeah. one with Gary Oldman, Crimson Tide. <gasps> I love Crimson Delta Tide. Delta Force. Yeah, don't like Delta Force. <laughs> Dead Man Walking. Okay. Eight Men Out. <laughs> How Eight many men? Eight Men Walking. <laughs> <laughs> Eight Men Walking Out. Eight Men Walking Out. Got it. Ghost. Eight Men Come Out. What? Oh. <laughs> Ghost. All right. Conversely, Ghostbusters. All right. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2. All right. Heavy Metal. All right. The Hunger Games. Oh, my. The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Sure. Now, hold on. Is that the one with... Uh, it's the one uh, with uh, Sutherland. Oh, my gosh. Who's also in your Hunger Games? 
Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, that would have been a good one for film set. It would have been. My, my rec- yeah. recollection is not only is he in it, but isn't, um, I want to say Leonard Nimoy has a role in that. Leonard Nimoy, I think. Donald Pleasance. Something like that. Yeah, and then pod. There's a rat turd in a kitchen scene. There's a a dog with a human face. Yeah. Why aren't we? Uh, okay, we'll have to find <laughs> oh. out when that ends. Maybe uh, October first. So we would have to jam it in before Hatari. Guess what? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if Randy was up a creek with that Hatari business. But we'll see. Really? Some, Brian. Well, Dunaway told me today via text that it's two and a half hours long. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm stressed about how long that movie is. <laughs> Anyway, what is it? Cameron? Did yeah. James Cameron was he involved with this? Yeah. Uh, finally, a league of their own. Legends of the Fall. Major League. Boop. Mean Girls. Yeah. Major Girls. <laughs> Patriot, <laughs> Patriot Games and Primal Fear. Pi- Primal Patriot is a good one. Primal Patriot. Um, all of those are. I don't. I'm not finding myself too upset, except for B- BSG, <clears throat> which is yeah. I just thought would always be there. I guess yeah. not. Um, and oh, Crimson Tide. Invasion- and Invasion of the Body Snatchers is the one from 1956. Oh, that is uh, not the 70s one, then. That is not the 70s one. Oh, well, then we're okay. I don't think that one we care about as much. Yeah, but I, I am pretty upset about Crimson Tide. It's one of my favorite Tony Scott movies, and I really like it a lot. So maybe I'll watch that before this time goes up. And the poster on? No, I guess I don't. I have Hunt for Red October. It always has that same music. And what's great about it is in, the, um, in that movie, you got Aragorn in the engine room. People, oh really? Yeah. People forget. I forgot his name though. What's his name? Uh, oh, who plays Aragorn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, Tortuga, uh, <laughs> Hildalgo, that guy. Uh, there's no Tortuga in there. Uh, oh shite. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo, Mo- Vigo. That's it. He's he's Vigo. uh he's got a great role in there, and uh, yeah, it, uh, that's an awesome thing. Gene Hackman. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's great. And the soundtrack, I swear, is identical to The Rock. It's the same damn sounding thing. In chat room, I came up with it before I saw you guys say it. We got to save the ship. All right. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So watch so for there that. You go. So rush out and see those at a Netflix near you. I want, they don't say what's coming new, though. No. Uh, no, not in that list. Oh, look, there is a new list here. You want to hear what's coming new? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, hold on. Is it the 20 best movies coming soon? Well, okay. Last Chance to Cast These Titles. Okay, these are all old ones. This is the same problem. Oh, there's way more getting canned. You want to hear more? Sure. 28 Days. These are all getting canned. These these didn't fall into Gizmodo's list of the 20 best. No. 28 Days, The African Queen, Ali- Aquila in the Bee. That's actually a really good movie. Barefoot in the Park, Beyond Borders, Blue Chips. We already said that one. Body of Evidence, Blood and Wine, Bram... Okay, I got that. Breaking Away. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That's there. Not Cutters. gonna be. Yeah. That goes away on the 30th. Uh, you know what's more fun to look at? Because there's a lot more in this list. Uh, is what you already can't see. So let me tell you what ended in September already. <laughs> so here's a list of, <laughs> of things that you you can't even watch for the next few days before they disappear. Yeah. They're gone already. I want you to <laughs> mourn it. Okay. Another Country. Breaker right. Morant. Okay. Death of a Salesman, 1985. Dawson's Creek. All of it. Not sad. Not Dr- sad. Dreamscape. Uh, this is the third time it's been gone, so I'm sure it'll be back. Yeah, it'll be back. Hoop Dreams. Fantastic documentary, <laughs> but not there. Uh, Hopscotch. A Brilliant Career. A Night at Casablanca, which does not sound like the actual Casablanca movie. <laughs> no. The Official Story. A Room with a View. And finally, Three Men and a Baby. Oh, no. There's one more. Devils on the Doorstep. So, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. I'm not sad about any of those. I'm not. <laughs> even there. I'm not really too broken up. Uh, they don't talk about what new ones are coming. So uh, always the negative internet. Always the negative. Can we be a little positive once in a while? Negative Nancy internet. Brian, yes. you know what time it is, don't you? What time is it? What time? Radio today is different. Powerful networks span the nation from coast to coast. Shortwave radio girdles the globe. Why it's the evening news, and it's brought to you by. Nasty olives. You ever have those kind that are like big, fat red ones that don't look like they grew on any tree in this country? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like they came yeah, from a fan of those. another planet almost, like that planet in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness where they had all the weird <laughs> stuff like that. Sometimes they have the stems on them still. Uh huh. Gross. Yeah. We yeah, had those tonight. Yeah. I like green olives, though. I'm, uh, you know, most people say, oh, I like black olives, but I don't like the green ones. I like the green ones, too. I think I like the green ones better, even. Um, mm-hmm. I think I hated them as a kid, but I gained a taste for them later and uh, quite yeah. like them now. Yeah, they're good. I don't like the little pimento thing in the middle, though. Whatever that is. What oh, is that in the middle? Those. What is that thing? 
little little slice of uh, pickled pepper. Yeah, it's like a little. So it's like somebody Pimento. little uh, anus piece thing. It's like a little <laughs> anus. Uh, a little skip tag. That's yeah. Good Exactly. All right. Speaking of Crimson Tide, with uh, uh, that's that's got your Denzel, w- Wint- yeah. Winton Marsalis. No, Denzel Washington. That's it. <laughs> um, he's in a new movie, and it's called The Equalizer, and it's based on that TV show. You remember this TV show in right? the '80s? It was yeah. good. Yes. What was his name? Uh, uh, Equalizer. Yeah. Was his name? He's an old Mr. guy. Mr. Equalizer. Old British dude, I think, or maybe he wasn't British, but he reminded me of an old British dude. Anyway, I thought that show was great when it was on. Totally cool. He equalized he, things. He equalized everything. He was great. And this was at a time when things were Transformers and uh, uh, Terminators and Edward Equalizers. Woodward Woodward. Well, that's Edward, a, Woodward. <laughs> Edward Woodward. Edward Woodward. Edward Woodward. He. Uh, they say in this review, early review, and I'm going to see with Kim this weekend. We're going on a date on Friday. Uh, that it transcends TV roots and shakes up the action genre. Ooh, it's wow. a mark of sharp director actor collaboration. Uh, that they can take it even routine material. I don't know if that. I can, listen, that old show was great. Knock it off, uh, internet. Be nice, and make it into something extraordinary. So this is uh, Antoine Fuqua and Denzel getting back together. They're the Training Day team. Uh, they did Training Day together, which he won an Oscar for. Nice. Fuqua is responsible for one of my favorite action movies ever, The Replacement Killers. So mm. hey, man. Bring it. It's also he's also the director of a very disappointing Bruce Willis movie, The uh, End of the Sun or Sun. There's the Sun in My Eyes or what was it? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Army dude, something in the sun got stuck right. in the sun. But not Kingdom of the Sun. You know, d- something of the inside the sun. Yeah. Sun, sun man go cometh. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is. Sure sure. It's Antoine Fuqua. Empire Someone, of, no, no, no not Empire, Empire of the Sun. That's a Spielberg mm-hmm. deal. Mm-hmm. It's chat room. Regarded. Come on, chat room knows. Tears of the Sun. Tears of the Sun, that's it. Where he was all squinty. Anyway, that movie is not a very good Antoine Fuqua movie. But I've I've learned that uh, everywhere I read, uh, nobody likes working with Bruce Willis. He's a huge pain in the butt. Really? Yeah. He's like the Mandy Patinkin of Bruce Willis movies. Uh, (laughs) People are just not into it. uh, I wonder if it's like something that's just... Like he's gotten more crotchety over time, right? Because he uh, looked like he'd be a lot of fun back in the 80s when he was doing... Stuff like Blind Date and Die Hard, and maybe he's just like sick that, of it. But... Yeah, who knows? Mm-hmm. I mean, Man, Bruce Willis, I can ask for whatever I want. <laughs> Bruce Willis, leave me alone. I'll squint in the come sun on, if I want. Come on, come to Los Angeles. We'll get some broads. <laughs> we'll smoke some cigars. It'll be fun. We'll have a blast. We'll have a blast. Yeah, booby. we'll make uh, fists with our toes <laughs> in the carpet. You know those airplanes with carpet. <laughs> they have carpet. It's not like a plush it's one. Not, he had no, his feet no, in. But it's, but it's, uh, I think the floor is just fuzzy. I always called <laughs> bullcrap on that. <laughs> like, that is not a plane I've been on. Uh, let's see. The Equalizer, a riveting thriller based on the late 80s CBS TV, uh, TV series, reunites uh, that team of Denzel and uh, director Antoine Fuqua, uh, who helmed him in his Oscar winning uh, bombastic corrupt cop movie, The Training Day, or just Training Day without the the in 2001. So it's been a while. The Training Day. But I'm totally going to see this because. I like me a good thriller, and I really like Denzel Washington, and I really like Antoine Fuqua. I feel like this is a winning combination. I really like my wife, too, and I know that she likes these things, so we're going to do this. That's what we're going to do. We're going on a date, so F off, everyone. F off. Preview. Preview looks darn good. Uh, You familiar with the work of New York Mayor? uh, What's his name? (laughs) It's not Giuliani anymore. Edward Edward, uh, Koch? No, it's not not Ed Koch. Ed Koch is long dead, isn't he? I know he is. No, he's still alive. I thought he's just... Koch was dead. Isn't he? Is he? Did he die? Let me find out. <laughs> Ed Koch. I can... I can. Uh... Yeah, Ed Koch is dead. He is died he okay? in... Oh, no. You know what? Yeah, he did. 88 last year. February 1st last year. Ed Koch. Oh, oh died at the age of 88. Yeah, died at the age of 88. No, he's still yeah. 88, but died last year. <laughs> I thought he died in 1988 last year. <laughs> It was a really, really long. He died slow, in '88 at the age of 88. <laughs> I wonder how many people died in '88 that were 88. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Because mm. now I we've imagine... reset. You don't want people dying at 14. You know that sucks. So, like 1995, how many 95 year olds died that year? That'd be interesting. Yeah, or not at all. Maybe just see how many who was born in 1900 and then just say still alive, dead. 
something well, probably dead now probably but. dead now yeah <laughs> well uh this is what happened the new york mayor has killed a beaver oh no staten island zoo officials went to great lengths to hide the death from the public and kept secret the fact that chuck was actually charlotte a female imposter beaver what yeah there's a big controversy <laughs> It's on the New York Post. So, I, think, you know. I think they've buried the lead. Who cares about the mayor <laughs> killing the beaver? We've got a a, a female imposter beaver. Charlotte Beaver. Charlotte Beaver, who is a charlatan, if you think about it. <laughs> the zoo told a few Staten Island zoo supporters, but claimed the groundhog died of natural causes. The stand was found it's a dead. Or it was a ground. What would I say? Beaver? It says beaver in the headline. It says beaver in the headline. Now they're saying groundhog. This oh, is now geez. a groundhog uh, uh, imposter. Great. It's a ground. It's a beave dog. Anyway, a beaver dog. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they claim. The beef dog. They, <laughs> <laughs> it's like some rapper would call his friend that. Yeah, beef dog. And his hey, posse. Beef dog. Yo, beef dog. That's right. Let's go out. My new, my new album's going to be dropping. That's right. Bring some Patron. We're celebrating beef dog. <laughs> Woo! I've heard that Patron right. thing mentioned before. I don't really know much about it. Uh, he died. Uh, so they claim he died of natural causes, but now here's the deal: uh, the uh, the stand-in was found dead in her enclosure in the Staten Island Zoo. Had a necropsy. Ne- and what's a ne- ne- necropsy? Necropsy. It's like an autopsy, but oh, but uh, on the deceased. Like well, a, you always you always do an autopsy on the deceased. Well, <laughs> not on beaver beaver dogs, do you? On the- <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why they don't say autopsy. Maybe cause... they dug it up. Maybe that's what happened. You know what I mean? Like necro would be... Oh, February 9th. Sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they pulled it out again. Maybe that's it. Anyway, they determined she died from an acute internal <laughs> set of injuries, sources say. She'd fallen nearly six feet when the mayor lost his grip during Groundhog Day's photo op. <laughs> and the sources oh, say uh, her injuries were consistent with a fall. Instead of revealing the sad loss, the zoo, which gets nearly half a, a half of its $3.5 million in annual funding from the city, told the staff to keep the mayor's office in the dark about the animal's fate. Mm-hmm. So the mayor didn't even know that he no, killed a beaver. he had no idea. All right, so, my God, New York Post. Way to write a story. <laughs> so let, let me actually try and put this in, in non-pulp fiction order here. Go for it, beef dog. So... so <laughs> So uh, February 2nd, Groundhog Day, yeah. the mayor picks up a beaver, drops at six feet. Yeah. Beaver in, beaver's injured. Yeah. Shoves her back in her, in her kennel, in yeah. her cage. Yeah. A week later, yeah. she's found dead. Yeah. Timeline so far consistent with what you're saying, yep. Then they bury her. Yeah, I assume. Dig her back up yeah. recently. Yeah. They and, don't give a date for the dig up, but yeah, I assume that. Okay, and then determine that the... <laughs> that she died from. <laughs> this is some crack journalism, dude. Wow. They've really gotten to the bottom of things in a way that makes me wonder if any of it's true. So, good job, uh, New York Post. Aren't they kind of known for being tabloidy and shitty? They are, yeah. They're the tabloid of the uh, of the New York uh, newspapers. All right. Because the they, Times, they're serious. They managed to fill an entire page with this, this drivel, oh. which could have been, yeah. which really could have been just uh, two, three sentences. By right. the way, back in back on Groundhog Day, the mayor dropped uh, a beaver who was impersonating a woman. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, you never know. Uh, and, uh, I I, yeah. I got I got something to, to 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 tell you about here that is also going to make you super excited before we go on to the Chinese restaurant <laughs> that almost killed us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to tell you about if I can ha- find it. Here it is, Washington Post. Now this is a reputable, sure, uh, publication. Okay. Sure. They broke the news about uh, Watergate. They are famous for uh, other stuff, right? Sure. The Washington Post says, no, you probably can't bend your iPhone 6 Plus unless you're a bodybuilder. (laughs) So they did a test because of all this freak out from everybody who says the Plus in particular, not the 6 so much, but the Plus is so bendy, right? Oh, you sat on it and made a big curve on my butt. It's like a big flat pipe cleaners yeah like we talked about it on uh tms on wednesday with tom sure. Sure. and as usual these things are oftentimes you know the internet has a way brian of blowing things up and making uh, things out of proportion so richard listen in listen close because i got this for you. <laughs> the verdict is in you can bend an iphone 6 plus but unless you are really trying to do it you probably will be fine that's right. the conclusion coming out of a uh, phone warranty provider and durability tester square trade which ran some basic bending tests this week on an iphone 6 plus at the washington post request after 
uh, reports circulated that the phone was uh, having a problem with this. Like, this was a common thing. Uh, let's see. Square tests are worth noting. It fell short of what Apple did in its labs, even. For the first tri uh, trial, Square's trade asked two of the most physically fit members of its office to try to bend some phones. Uh, they couldn't do it. They finally had to bring in Bodybuilder Man, who's got guns the size of honey hams. <laughs> really? And he barely could get it to bend. Now, see, I saw a video of a guy who was, who was bending it, like, live. Now, watch the, this video here. I'm going to click okay. it. We'll right. play. You can't really hear anything. You can put it in Skype or something. Yeah. Well, it's in that link. Uh, what link? In the oh, notes. the link that uh, the the groundhog. Oh, I didn't give you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. No, it wouldn't, of course, be on that. All right. Uh, over here next to the groundhog link. Okay. Right there. See that? Oh, okay. I see it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Hard to <laughs> Now watch that video. He did get it to start a sort of bend, but this is the muscly man. You can see a little bit of a curve down there. But this this is a huge body build dude yeah, who tried to oh, snap the phone. He's still trying. Jeez. I like that he brings his protein uh, powder. Did he really? Along with oh, it. he did. That's crazy. Why did he bring that? <laughs> anyway, that guy couldn't break it either. So listen, just relax, everybody. Yes, you yeah. can bend the phone, but you have to try really hard or be super dumb about it. Right. And this is true of most other phones. You can bend... The five yeah, there was S's. a whole right. There was a whole uh, link. Somebody posted a link with uh, showing all these other phones that are bent. Some of them, some of them, I couldn't believe the iPhone five. I'm amazed somebody was able to bend one of those mm -hmm. because that thing. What's a beast? You know, it, it is a beast. It's a big, thick mama jama, and, and it's mostly glass, isn't it? Right, and the side panels are solid. It's not like, you know, it's it's a, a thing sandwiched together. Mm -hmm. It's like a um, it's like a hockey puck. A yeah. flattened hockey puck, basically, with a yeah. a side rail. And the other know. one, uh, I saw somebody bending a Note Three, a Samsung Note Three, mm -hmm. and it it snapped right in half. Oh, <laughs> really? Shattered. Well. Yeah. So you look, these things will break if you apply them enough pressure. I mean, uh, yes. Just mm -hmm. don't do that, and you'll be sure you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be if fine. You, if you're sitting down and you feel a little resistance in your pocket from the uh, uh, from your phone. Here, that's an opportunity maybe to stand up, pull the phone out of your pocket, set it down on the table, and sit down again. Yeah. Welcome to the world of common sense, everyone. Don't go to this Chinese restaurant, though. Food enthusiasts may joke about a dish lasting, uh, sorry, tasting so good that there must be drugs in it. Mm -hmm. But the owner of a restaurant in China recently admitted to actually putting drugs in his noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so not drunken noodles, but drug noodles. Mm -mm. Yeah, exactly. And this is BBC reporting this, so it seems reputable. Okay. In an attempt right. to keep customers coming back for more, a shop owner referred to Zhang, uh, admitted, or, or referred to as Zhang. That could be a million guys, whatever. Sure. I'm sorry, it could be a billion guys. <laughs> uh, admitted to police that he added crushed poppy buds to his noodles in his restaurant. And uh, this is in central China. Police discovered his special ingredient during a routine urine test on one of his diners, uh, Liu Julu. During a traffic stop, Julu uh, tested positive for drugs hours after leaving the restaurant, but denied any uh, that she was taking any. Uh, he was taken in for 15 days on a charge of drug abuse. And then it all came out. Oh, no, geez. these are on the damn noodles, dude. <laughs> That's a ripoff. So is it... I mean, I know poppy seeds and opium poppy, like, you know, if you, they, they figured this out on Mythbusters, that if you, if you eat a poppy seed cake, yeah. like an entire poppy seed cake, you will come up positive for, for drug testing. But it's never like a muffin, right? Like a muffin Right, no, too if small. you just have a muffin, if yeah. you just have like a slice of poppy seed cake, you're fine. Yeah. But in um, this case, they, I mean, this guy's putting actual like hardcore amounts yeah, of poppy like oil it. in there. And that's like, enough to, oh. you know, test positive on your way home. Huh. That's crazy. That is crazy. Justin Bieber is also crazy, but this time he didn't do anything wrong. He just got hurt. Let's talk about his injury. <laughs> all right. For some reason, this is all in caps on this website. So I'm going to read it as I saw it. Okay, here we go. Justin Bieber injures eardrum <laughs> while cliff diving. Blames cliff diving. <laughs> is that a guy's name, though? Justin Bieber. Blames cliff diving. Oh. <laughs> cliff, it's your fault. I shouldn't have gone cliff diving with cliff diving. <laughs> another day, another headline about Justin Bieber gets getting busted. But before you get excited about the new Biebs mugshot, it's not what you think. It's actually his eardrum that is busted. On Thursday, Justin Bieber tweeted, is that today, I guess? Tweeted well, about cliff only, diving injury. This it's only news. fair that he finally does something to his own eardrums. Right. Ah, burr, burr, I got it. Burr. I got it. Apparently, nice. the singer suffered an injury to his eardrum while jumping off a cliff and shared the news with his fans saying, busted my eardrum cliff diving. Uh... 
Doc says I might need surgery now. Sucks, he says. <laughs> Jeez. So, sucks. <laughs> he followed up his tweet with even more details, writing, quote, my eardrum might... Uh, my eardrum might back us up a little, but I'm still bringing you this new music. Much love. Damn you, cliff diving. Damn you, cliff diving. Because it's the cliff Damn diving you fault. Cliff diving. Yeah. Cliff Clifford diving the third. <laughs> uh, anyway, chunks of rocks. Who knows? Pop. That thing hurts. Whatever. It'll heal. You'll be fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then finally, an accused smuggler has been found. Finally, an accused smuggler. He's finally, finally. been found. <laughs> he had fur, fur, he had 51 turtles beneath his clothing clothing oh. somehow a canadian man have we done a power for a canadian man i'm sure a canadian man has come up with a power before but uh give him a new one what's his power sure able to ride around in a red uniform and wear a silly hat like pharrell williams excelsior canadian man nicely done i, I decided not to go to the well of tim horton's Money with holes or uh, uh, or a boot. Ah, good job. <laughs> I can appreciate where you're at. Runs hey, I, a boot. I mean, I made it. <laughs> I made a joke today. I want to. I want to share this with you on Twitter. If you haven't heard it, I said this. Hold on, I gotta find it here. I tweet too much. Oh, I said because McDonald's is doing some bull crap with like healthy food again, but down by us. Oh yeah, yeah. We're yeah. so much healthier. It's like I don't believe any of it. So I wrote this tweet. I said, expecting McDonald's to be considered. Or sorry, expecting McDonald's to be concerned with your health is like waiting for Santa to show up or believing Stan Lee hand types his own tweets. <laughs> now, I bring that up because, A, you were talking, we were doing an Excelsior moment. Sure. But also, sure. a bunch of people are now uh, mad and taking issue with the fact that I'm claiming he doesn't type his own tweets. Kind oh, of really? missing the point of the tweet in the first place. But still, there's no way he types his own tweets, you guys. It, if you and if you believe that, then you believe George Takai is making his own Facebook posts. He's got people doing it. In fact, didn't that come out that he has people doing it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It did. He doesn't totally make his did. own. We're totally fine with that. It's fine. It's fine. Just relax. Uh, anyway, this guy had a bunch of turtles on him. <laughs> Fifty-one is America. He was at a border, uh, or sorry, a tunnel between uh, Detroit Windsor Tunnel, so like right between Canada and Detroit. Okay. And uh, he was, uh, his name was Kei Zhu. He's another Chinese guy, I guess. Hmm. Charged Wednesday with smuggling, illegal trading, and exporting. A bond hearing was scheduled for next Thursday in Detroit. A U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service agent received a tip about a large box sent to Detroit's postal center. Turns out it was full of uh, turtles. And when they uh, pulled him up or grabbed him, they took off his coat and there were turtles everywhere. Just mm. covered, it, covered in turtles. Think he was uh, going to go make soup? I don't know, man. What would you do with turtles up there? Are they just sold as pets? Maybe just sold as pets. I mean, it could be. Well, you went dark. Yeah. You went food. You went all the way down to the. We're I did go cook food. them and eat them. Yeah. Well, because you hear about shark fin soup. You hear about you know people poaching, uh, you know animals and and trying to smuggle, smuggle them across the borders for food uh, stuff. You ever had any of that uh, shark? No, I have not. Or turtle? I've had turtle. I've had turtle. I haven't had turtle either. It wasn't soup, but I had turtle, and I've had squirrel, and I've had. Oh, I had another thing. Oh, ground, uh, not groundhog. Pot uh, pot guts? You know what those are? Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> you ever yeah. had beaver? You ever... <laughs> wait, wait. Dude, what was it called? Something beef? Oh, a beef dog. Beef dog. You ever had a beef dog? <laughs> had a beef dog? <laughs> really good. Anyway, that's your news. And uh, now we're going to take a break, play a little music. Brian, you got a little music? Yes, I do. Oh, great. I have to remember what we decided. There it is right there. Okay. T. Uh, all right. <laughs> TB. Yeah, TB. This is uh, Jerry from Texas emailed in. Hello, Sweden and Bork Bork. Right. September 25th marks the 24th anniversary of the birth of the love of my life, Samantha. The day I met her, my whole world changed for the better. And, oh, crumb. I didn't, uh, hold on. Oh, crumb. The less popular you know, redheaded brother of our crumb. <laughs> why Why Google Docs doesn't stay rap text? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't it irritates the crap out of me. Yeah. Uh, the day I met her, my whole life changed for the better, and every day since then has been another look forward to sharing with her. She's an amazing person and a beautiful soul, and every minute I spend with her is time that I hold close to my heart. As a longtime fan of all things Frog Pants, I recently introduced her to TMS. And not a day goes by without a reference to a recent or past show that has us laughing hysterically. In honor of this wonderful occasion, can you play the original song? Wait a minute. That's not it. 
Can you play? There we go. Uh, can you play something he said that I didn't have? If not, I'll leave it in the capable midst of Mr. Ribbit to find any cover of an 80s freestyle song. It would really make her day. Thanks for the awesome show. Slow the flow, though. Jerry G, a.k.a. Magic Man in the Tadpole. Ah, so very nice. I didn't have that one, so I, I had to go to his follow-up, which is the 80s freestyle song. So, like, uh, uh, not in vogue, but... Uh, um, well, we're going to be playing Stacy Q, but other things like that. Patrice Russian, uh, Forget Me Not. So there was a whole wave of these dancey tracks that were considered freestyle. And uh, Lisa Lisa and Cult Jan, for example. Uh, and then, of course, Stacy Q, mm. who did Two of Hearts. Mm. Let's listen now to a cover of Two of Hearts. This is a guy named Brad Walsh who recorded this for his 2007 album, Prior To. And uh, I totally dig this. And it still, it still rocks out. Actually, it rocks out even more than the original. Uh, here is Brad Walsh and Two of Hearts. I need you too. 
<laughs> Two of Hearts, man. Who was saying the original? I forgot already. Stacy Keel. Stacy Keel. Q. 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 As in, as in, not uh, Keel. All knowing and all powerful. Beave dog. <laughs> She was Stacey, the, she, you know Stacey her. Beef dog. She was the old beef dog, remember? Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Yes. All right. Well, uh, guess what, everybody? And you can always follow me on Twitter. Bird goes tweet. Want to go bird hunting this weekend? Why, sure. Why not? Let's get into some, uh, some Twitter here, some Twitter Love questions. This. One of my favorite parts of the week. <clears throat> me too. I'm going to do a quick email before we get to it, though. Okay. And by the way, those Twitter questions come to us on Twitter. All you have to do is, you don't even have to follow us. I mean, I think you should, but. If you don't want to, or if you don't want to include us in the in the reply, that's fine too. Just use the hashtag #AskTMS. Ask. No, no. They should follow us. It's well, they silly should follow for us too. That's, to. Yeah, it's dumb yeah. not to. But you don't have to include it in this tweet. I guess is what I'm saying. Don't take up precious 140 characters with our name. Just go ahead and use the oh, hashtag. All right, sure. Uh, this email I'm going to read real quick though came to us to our email address, the at gmail.com, and it goes like this. This is Susanna from Vermont. That's where they make fine jellies. <laughs> you know, I hear tale that old man Wilson up there. He's keeping a couple of dead bodies under the street there. Oh. All right. Back in the early 90s. Oh, she says, Dear Squirini and Burdum. Very <clears throat> good. Oh, I'm all phlegmy for some reason. Back in the early 90s, I went to a Mannheim Steamroller concert. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Did you take a good book? That was so Utah, man. Everybody uh, here loves them. So, right. My mom still goes every year to their Christmas thing. gosh. Seriously. It was a fad that I wish never happened. Anyway. I was all over Mannheim Steamroller. I liked it early, though. I think later I didn't like it, but early it was great. Some of their weird, like, yeah. It's totally got all Christmassy. They had a Fresh Air series or something. Sure. It was really good. Anyway, uh, at Fiddler's Green near Denver with my boyfriend. Oh, Denver. Mm-hmm. And we saw, uh, let's see, saw some of the last seated. Try that one. Try that sentence again. We were some of the last seated. <laughs> and as we sat down, I le- <laughs> It's rough today. I left out an impressively audible fart or let out. <laughs> I said left out. <laughs> Let out an impressively audible fart that made the people next to me and in front of me whip their heads around in surprise. I was wow. so mortified that I went into denial mode and re- and re-con- retconned it in my head so that in my universe, my boyfriend did it. But no, I confess before you and Chip <laughs> Davis that it was me. Chip Davis. I haven't heard that name so long. Maybe it was all that fresh air with an E. Uh, John the Snow Crow, Susanna from Vermont. You know, I think it's cool that you're willing to admit it, Susanna, no kidding. to yeah. own it all these years later. I uh, wonder what wow. takes her to Vermont. Why are you not in Denver anymore? Denver's a cool town. Well, probably the shame. I believe you all welcome here. We don't <laughs> mind people who fought out loud. That's right. Why don't you have uh, some Why of my fine jelly? <laughs> open arms. <laughs> Brought you some peach pie. You know, I wouldn't go to that fourth house on the left, though. There's real <laughs> trouble there. I don't know why I think those people talk like that, but in my head, they do. All right, here's your TMS questions for the week. All right, okay. Get to these here. Oh, it's taking forever to open. There we go. Okay, question number one. Uh, Do you find that the... uh, Here we go. Sorry. Do you find that the successes you've made or that you've had makes you want to grow frog pants even more or just coast? Says Rupert Golly. Mm, Sounds Um, like one for for you. I don't think I've coasted... (laughs) Like this, the question implies that I'm coasting now. No, no, no. Yeah. Does it? The, the, the successes you've made want you to grow it or just coast? Meaning, well, what am I do? What is the stage I'm in right now then? Well, no, no yeah, it's you're still growing it. I yeah, mean, basically, I am still he's saying it. He's, he's saying like with all the success that Frog Pants is having, will there be a time where you say, you know what, I don't want to keep growing it. I want to just kind of sit back and and let it uh, and just kind of ride the wave. I want to grow it. Uh, I don't want to. I'm not one of those guys, though, that needs to be a millionaire when he dies. I just need to pay my bills and make my family happy and uh, have fun making what I like to make. That's really all mm-hmm. I need. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, you guys are helping us do that. So, big thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. Dear listener. You guys are awesome. Molly Decatur wrote in says, Can you recommend a Clint Eastwood Western? Sure. <laughs> Brian probably can't. I could. I'd recommend Unforgiven. Uh, you know what? That was going to be mine. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's if there's one if there's one western uh, that I know, I mean, I, you know, you go with any of the Kalinis with like uh, the Fistful of Dollars, the mm-hmm. Good, Bad, and the Ugly, Pale Rider, for a few dollars more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for an extra couple bucks. Got fifty bucks. <laughs> Got fifty bucks more. So do you? <laughs> Now, if you were to say, you know, can you recommend a good uh, Lee Van Cleef western? Right. 
I would I would step aside and well, I'd still. I'm step not aside. sure I could either, though, because I'm more <laughs> of the I'm more of the modern era Western anyway. I'm not so, such a huge fan of the spaghetti era stuff or any of that. Scott, could you recommend a good Kevin Costner Western? Yes, two of them. You want two? <laughs> Silverado and yeah. uh, um, I'm not going to count Dances with the Wolves Postman. as a Western. Not the Postman. That's a horrible film. I'm going to recommend uh, the best. So we're not talking about best Kevin Costner experience here. We're talking sure. about best Western, not we the hotel. Know what you would say for the best Kevin Costner? Yeah, yeah. Experience. yeah. But Open Range is such an underrated movie. I freaking love Open Range so much. Here's the thing, though. If you liked Unforgiven, Brian, here's what you would also like. You just don't know it yet. You would like 310 to Yuma, the new one. Mm-hmm. In fact, you'd love it. It's awesome. And you would like uh, Deadwood on HBO. Hmm. Which I know you still have like Blu-rays or DVDs like, or something. Yeah, I have my my late stepfather's Blu-rays. That's got to come up for you. That is such a great, great thing. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I'll All watch right. it. I'll watch it. All right, okay, fine, I'll watch fine. It. If you listen, if you like, if you like <laughs> The Sopranos or you like, you know, yeah. Breaking Bad or any of these shows, I mean, that's what this. It's kind of that. And it's, it's just you know, set, it's just the setting that you're that's throwing you. And I can't use off. the argument. Well, I don't really care for westerns because I don't really care for meth dealers either. But I really enjoyed Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the westerns. Really... See, because I'm kind of with you. The westerns you don't like, I don't really like either. Like the whole like spaghetti western, bam, 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 bull crap. I'm not into that. Yeah, yeah. That is not my thing. I just like the I like kind of Silverado and Forward, right? Which I know is a limited library of westerns, but I love them. Uh, 310 to Yuma is uh, just so fantastic. So good. Yeah, and I'd... So good. I'd rank that at the very top of my Western list. So. Yeah, it's right up there for me. It's really good. Uh, freaking what's-his-name. So good in there. Can't think of his name now, but uh, that guy. Who played Angel in the third... Uh, yep. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. That guy. Right, right, right. Beef, beef Dog. That guy. <laughs> beef Dog. Beef Dog. <laughs> not, not to be confused with Bean Fork, who was also in 310 to Yuma. Uh, okay, how about this? Coverville, yeah. ha- has your son been involved in any of the school protests in your area, says Brian K. Woodward. He has, Brian. Uh, well, sort of. He has. His school has. Yeah. Um, what are the protests? So I don't even know what's going on. They Okay, so some some moron <laughs> on the, uh, the school board um, was uh, not petitioning, but basically was suggesting that they modify the history curriculum for high schoolers to leave out any stories of social unrest. Hmm. So uh, protests like, um, you know, uh, Martin Luther King's uh, assassination, stuff like that, that is like based on on civil unrest yeah. and civil civil disobedience. Sure. They said, we need to focus more on patriotic topics oh. and less on... <laughs> right? Uh, and more on... Uh, uh, is this Colorado Springs? Spring? Is this where this is coming from? <laughs> no, from, from uh, Denver Public Schools. That's bad. That's it's very really bad. bad when the public really school bad. starts talking like that. Yes. I am all into protesting that business. Yes. So uh, Tristan's school was one of the ones that had a walkout earlier this week. Um, teachers from a couple schools had a, a sick out last week. I hate that phrase. I hate that term, sick out. I, that's what people had in uh, the <gasps> Minority Report when they got poked with that stick. <laughs> right. They had a sick out. Right. Um, so I am all for that. That's good. Yeah. And so he's been participating in the way that the school has, I guess, or whatever. The school's been participating. The um, He was going to go for the walkout uh, earlier this week, but it occurred after he switched over to his his uh, college technical school. So in the afternoons, he goes over to a technical school oh, cool. um, where he still gets uh, high school credit as well as college credit. Yeah, those are um, cool programs. Yeah. yeah, totally is. That's great. So uh, Carter's doing something similar, but it's, I forget how it works. Something like that's going on too. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. It's Good a great, a great opportunity. Well, they're seniors. They can get uh, early bird specials at Denny's now. Oh wait, right. different kind of senior. <laughs> uh, oh, no, not them all. We got a great. I got a great tweet. I got to share with you. This is not part of the questions. And Camille, I'm sorry, man, but this just is awesome. And I think it's okay. when I say man, I think it is a a dude. It's his, his full name is Camille Kolaskanski. It's like it's a very Polish name. Sure. Says uh, Scott Johnson. Hey, does your new picture, meaning my avatar on Twitter, does it have to be black and white? It's kind of depressing. Like my favorite podcaster has died or something. <laughs> then he says, and this is before I replied at all. He says, I don't mean to sound so passive aggressive. It's your profile after all. Sorry. And then he said, oh, shite. I'm going to end up on TMS for this. Love the show, though. All right, you did. You're in. Yep. You're in, well buddy. 
Nice job. All right, next up, we got um, uh, Barry Ricks asks, what do you kids... Sorry, my eyes are going tonight. What are you guys using to manage your social media? What program do you like? Do you like... I don't use a, like a big all-in-one deal. Do you? Like, what do you do? No, no I'm very... I'm, I'm really bad at my social media. Um, when I get mentioned in a Facebook post, I get an email, and then I might go in there and check it out. My notifications list, oh my God, my friends list, yeah. like a, a friend request list yeah. is so ridiculously long. Yeah that it just seems so insurmountable. I look at this thing, it's like, well, I, yeah, I could go through and just go approve, 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 but that one's obviously spam. And mm -hmm. That's a bot, uh, whatever, sure. Right, so I have TweetDeck up in the corner of my screen, mm -hmm. uh, a big old iMac monitor. Yeah. TweetDeck sits down there in the corner of my screen and only shows me my feed and then my mentions. So if somebody directly includes me in a tweet, then I get it in there, and then everybody that I follow is in the second column. Mm. Um, but yeah, I really don't. I don't do a really good job of I think managing I, that social media. I don't think I do either, except I do. So what I do, Facebook, I don't, I, I just accept everybody. It may be a mistake, but I just accept everyone. I don't mm -hmm. care. Love so, all, serve all. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but in, when it comes to Twitter, I use the Mac uh, Twitter app, which is a uh, Mac only. They never made a PC version. I don't know why, but it's the official Mac one. It was originally that, was it Tweety back in the day? Who was it that made the Mac app that was really popular and then Twitter bought them and just kind of co-opted it? It was Tweety, yeah. Tweety, I think. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's what this used to be. Now it's the official Twitter Mac app and it lets you have multiple accounts. So I have, what, nine accounts in here and I manage them all with this one app. Mm. Uh, I can also do it on my phone with TweetBot if I want, but that's kind of a pain, so I don't really worry about it there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, when I'm doing show posts and stuff, I just quickly jump between accounts and you know post where I'm supposed to be posting and check for stuff, but... I don't have any special magic with this. It's just kind of haphazard. I should probably get better at it, but whatever. Yeah, I should I should uh, do better as well. I I feel like I'm not. I feel like I don't post enough socially, and I feel like when I do see it popping up in the bottom right corner, I'm easily distracted by it. So yep. I need <laughs> I need a good social media strategy. Is Indeed. what I need. Is there any social media consultants yeah. who could help me? I don't know. Social media strategy? Just don't ask that with your Twitter account or 9,000 new bots will follow you. <laughs> exactly. It's real bad. Yeah. yeah. What is your... Fa oh, that's what's funny. Yesterday, a bot replied to me. Oh, what was it? It was just a tiny comment and it triggered some bot reflex, reflex and it immediately posted something. And it, it freaked me out. I was like, whoa, mm. that was a little too quick. Yes. I don't remember what it was. Ah. I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. Here's another one. Okay. Uh, what is your current favorite iPhone app? Asks Oscar. Mm. Uh, Oscar the Assassin is his name. Um, do I have a favorite right now? Gosh. You know, the thing that's got me completely and totally hooked. What's that? Is uh, Spider-Man Unlimited. Oh, it's good. It's so good. I agree. And now that I've figured out how to, um, how to rank them up. Mm-hmm. Because I thought, oh, man, ranking up, it's going to cost ISO. I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend money on this game. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, when you get your daily free Spider-Man that comes out of the portal, yeah. uh, if you've got other ones of that same level, like all gray or all green or mm -hmm. all, you know, whatever, you put three of them together, shoink, and, yep. it, and it merges them and gives you an extra level. It's like, oh, I had no idea. It's it's an incredibly it's so good and the game is game. so deep. It's really well done. Yeah, Gameloft Game nailed Center. it. They nailed it. They, really they, they took a thing that I was kind of getting sick of and made it fresh. And I don't, I don't know how they did that, but they totally did that. Right. Um, I have a lot of apps and stuff, but I'll, I'll stick to games because I think that's kind of where we're at here. Um, I really like this pedometer app, though, that, that keeps track of my steps all day. That's a that's a mm. iOS 8 thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you, and it, it's right there on the, uh, what do you call it, screen? The widget screen thing? Uh, the unlock screen, so you're not even unlocked. You can see I've done 40, oh, really? 4,300 oh, steps so far. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's just like having that's a... Only, but that, that's only with the iPhone uh, 6, though, right? Uh, No, I think the 5... Well, 5S. I, mean, I know the software... Oh, okay. oh 5S. Okay, 5S and up, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah if I'm you have that 5S. one, then you have it all. No. Uh, although I think My maybe... phone is so old and <laughs> sucky. It's geezery. Um, okay, the two games I'm really into right now. Ruzzle Adventure. Ruzzle is a puzzle game that's like Boggle. You can hear it. Oh, so it's a spring morning, everybody. I'm going to hold up my janky old phone to the chat room so you can see my janky old phone. Oh my phone. gosh, what is that? <laughs> what, 
<laughs> is that a fake? It looks fake. It's a, it's a fake. It's a trio. This is the one that uh, they have in, in their stores. It's yeah. weighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really not. Um, it doesn't have the guts of the phone. It's just weighted to feel the, guts, the same. But it's the, it is the outside. Like the buttons and the keys still work. Yeah. So if I ever have to do like a prank where I like drop my phone in a thing of water and pull it back out, I can. That's do amazing. It that's totally amazing. I love that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> for me, uh, that's a Maybe cool app sir. because it's it basically acts like a Fitbit or a Nike Plus or Nike uh, Fuel Band kind of thing uh, with your phone and just tells you how long you've been walking and how far you've gone and all that. And it's just nice because now those widgets are like right on the lock screen. It's not like an app you have to run to find it. It's just there. Um, iOS 8 really opened that stuff up. So some of you, hey, Richard, you can calm down a little bit. Now we have widgets and, uh, and all that. <laughs> I even have freaking different keyboards if I want them. Anyway, nice. yeah, that, right. so I played this Ruzzle, uh, Ruzzle Adventure thing. It's basically Boggle, but with like objectives, and it's all single player. Mm. And it's uh, a word game, and I love good word games, and I'm really having fun with it. And it's free, and it, but it doesn't feel like it's pestering me to spend money all the time, which I like. And then the other thing I am playing is Desert Golf. It is s graphically as simple as like an old Atari 2600 game. <laughs> okay so fun and i want to say it was either a buck or free i don't remember exactly but so aggravating and fun at the really? same time i really like it a lot with crappy with crappy uh quality graphics yeah. still very engaging it's int it's intentionally that way i think i mean they're going for a style here well and and you know i mean thomas was alone i uh, i loved so i'm not really i'm not coming down on uh, games that use simple graphics. So. Yeah, and, and games like that are sort of in again. I mean, it's, there's moments that are super aggravating because it's hard, but they're procedurally generating all these courses. It's never the same twice. Um, mm -hmm. It's just golf, and it's fun, and I like it. A great time killer. It's really fun. So I recommend it. There it is, chat room. Look at my desert. Desert golf. Because you're liter literally playing in the desert. Not really, literally, but you know literally. What I mean. You know what I mean? Oh, whoops! I'm right. <laughs> Virtually. Virtually. <laughs> Got another one here from. Uh, what is it that if anyone needs to ask Scott Johnson a question, they have to put a gun to his head? Oh, Joseph what? asked this. I get what he's saying. So I say this a lot on the show. I, I here's the things I say a lot, and I'm trying to curb them. Okay, tell me if these okay. sound familiar to you. Okay. The point is this. <laughs> All right, there's one. Yeah. On the whole. On the whole is another one. There's number two. And they're kind of the same. They're interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I do. I, um, I like to re. I, the third thing I do, which I actually kind of enjoy, so I don't think I am going to change it, but I, I put emphasis on different syllables or parts of words that I'm not supposed to mm -hmm. or sentences. Like instead of saying the day is or the sun is out today, I would say the sun is out today mm -hmm. or something right, stupid. Right. I like doing that. Um, and the fourth thing is that I say, well, oh, if you're if I'm choosing between, you know, <laughs> Empire Strikes Back and Indiana Jones, right? And you're and you're holding a gun to my head, right? That's I always say that. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Oh, that's fantastic. That's annoying. I agree, Joseph. I'm not gonna do it anymore now that you mention it. His real name or his Twitter name is Scooch55. It's a great name. <laughs> Uh, My favorite is vagina. <laughs> vagina, because I couldn't say vagina with a straight face. Right. right. Um, f <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's one for both of us. Feature, or sorry, favorite guilty pleasure meal or snack when your spouse is out of town? Ask Kaylin. Mm. Brian, you want to go first? What do you go to when like Tina's out of town? And you're like, I'm getting in the fridge and getting blank. What is it? Well, it's not even the fridge. I think this counts for going out, which is the guilty pleasure is uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm. If Tina's out, if I'm in charge of, of dinner, especially if it's for dinner for me and Tristan, yeah. we're going we're going up the street to Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, yeah, that's a good choice. And I do the same. And that's bad because that stuff's fried and it's just not good. Actually, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't eaten there since I quit fried food, though. Really? Yeah, hey, I go good. instead. I go to uh, Wing Nuts. You've been there. Yeah. And well, they uh, bake they bake their deal. It's all baked. Yeah, they mm. bake their deal. Every time they got a deal, <laughs> they bake it. And they bake it. Yep. Like uh, some fresh baked deal for me. Steve dog. <laughs> for me, the story varies year to year, but right now my real guilty pleasure kind of, why did I eat that whole thing? Food is pizza hut or not pizza, hut, uh, Domino's delivery. And they do that really thin crust pizza. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. could eat a whole damn pizza. It's just bad. So when Nick and I are alone, like, Ooh, dude, night out, Nick, me and you at home, girls are out. Let's have some fun, play video games and order pizza. And we always get pizza and I always eat way too much of it. And the next day I've just got a gut bomb all day. Oh God. That sounds so fun though. It's fun. It is fun. Just we're doing playing this. video games with the sun and I think Saturday we're doing that. <gasps> nice. And there's no wedding this weekend. 
<laughs> this is the first wedding in two weeks where there isn't going to be a or first weekend in two weeks where there isn't going to be a wedding. I know, right? And the Kim, so Kim this morning had to call those two while they're on their honeymoon to say something about oh, there's something about their apartment and whether their car was moved because they're doing it spray washing something. And anyway, she just wanted to see if she needed to go over and move their car, her her car, while they're gone. They're in California, right. so she calls and he answers kind of tired sounding. And he explained it, and it was all good. And then later, she texted him and just said, "Hey, sorry if I called so early. I forgot you guys were an hour back. It would have been like, I don't know, seven a.m. there." He goes, "Sorry if we woke you guys up." He sends back the reply, "We weren't." Ernest, no, he writes back the reply, "We weren't asleep." Winky face. <laughs> I don't need to be reminded oh, that my yeah. little girl is doing it. <laughs> I don't need to be told. Oh, no. You know what I mean? I mean, this used to be her. Fear my leet skills. I don't need to hear that she's involved in coitus. <laughs> All right. I hate that word. Yeah. Let's do a couple more here, and then we'll let All people right. go. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> How about this one? Uh, let's see. That one's weird. How about... Okay. Coming from a UK taxi driver that basically lives at night. His name is Will Usherwood. It's a lorry driver, yeah, right? Yeah, a lorry. Well, wait, yeah. no, those are trucks, aren't they? Aren't they like oh, semis? Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, you're right. What's yes. a taxi over there? I think this is a taxi. I'm not sure about that. If you could be nocturnal, would you? Hmm. And he also wants to hear the 1930 soundbite. So, uh, <laughs> Daryl, you got a fan in him. Hold on, 1930. Here it is. I'll play it. 1930, 1930, 1930. 1930. All right. That's the end of that. Nice. Um, what do you say? You want to be I nocturnal? Say, I say, well, if I were single, if I were alone, like yeah. if I didn't have a family that wouldn't be nocturnal, mm -hmm. um, I'd consider it. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like not. I like. Yeah. I, I like day. I, I like day as well. I mean. I'm not going to trade. I, yeah. I, I, I'll, no. Yeah. Going out for a bike ride, all that stuff. You can't really do that at, at uh, overnight. No. So that I know of. No, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd be nocturnal. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. I'm. It's a good you. question, though. It's a great question, but I'm not gonna do it. I like night, but I think I liked it more when I was younger, and now I don't care so much. Now it's just kind of nothing good happens at night except mm -hmm. me sleeping. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's one from. Huh. That one's weird. Let me skip down to. <laughs> Weird. Uh, like questions like hobos or hillbillies, we probably are gonna probably there's just no way there's oh, yeah. no answer there. Yeah. Um okay. Okay, we'll take half this guy's question. Uh TJ Rowe says Stand stranded on an island, favorite TV series. Mm. What do you what um, do you take with Lost? You? <laughs> Lost, oh man. No, I think uh it's just funny. Stranded on an island, yeah, favorite yeah, TV yeah. series. Yeah. Uh Probably Seinfeld. I think I would take. Uh, it never the whole was run boring. It was never boring, and you always laughed, and it's always a cheerful, good time. Exactly. That's a really good choice. I think I, I can like. Always where you're go at. back to it. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be the entire run of Futurama for me. Oh wow! That's pretty repeatable for me. It's because like, mm -hmm. what we're both aiming here for is repeatable uh, repeatability. Yes, I think exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For me, Futurama is that. Maybe it's The Simpsons because I the have Simpsons. so much of it. Yeah. Exactly. Twenty-two I mean, 20, years of it. Right. Whatever it is. Um, Trying to think, if there's there anything big, else. Um, big Family Guy Simpsons crossovers happening uh, in the next couple weeks. I thought that already happened. That's still happening, or yet to be. I, I, thought, I didn't think it uh, came out yet. I thought did that it? Already did. Maybe it didn't. Mm. I know the Futurama crossover hasn't come out yet, and that's mm -hmm. coming soon. Right. And that has me more, way more excited than the, than the Family Guy one. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else like that. I can't think of anything else I would want that much TV of. Mm -hmm. Um. West Wing. <laughs> yeah, but after a while, I mean, even that would wane because, you know, you've only got five or six seasons or whatever, and it's only, you know, you can only, I mean, yeah, I don't think that one works. In fact, I can't think of a drama that does. Can you think of a drama you'd want to watch? I mean, I, I love Breaking Bad, but I don't want to watch that over and over and over. Um, I mean, Lost would be, of, of any drama, that would be the one that I would always go back to. The problem is that there is only six seasons of it, and one of them is a short season, or two of them are short seasons. So... You'd get you'd get through it over and over really quickly, but I really really enjoyed. Okay, if the requirement is drama, you'd go you'd go lost. Let's say that's the requirement, no comedies. You'd go lost. 
I, I might I go. Last. I'd Star probably Trek, go. Wow. Oh, Star Trek's TNG. Star Trek's a pretty good one too. Yeah. TNG would be good, but I think or I'd Battle watch Star Galactica. Freaks and Geeks never gets boring to me. I could take that with me. That's not a drama, though, isn't it? I oh. would. I would say that that's more well, comedy. That you know that of that Orange is the New Black line. I would say that Freaks and Geeks is more comedy than drama. Um, yeah, but it's not played it's not for laughs, though. You know what I mean? Like, if there's some right. funny moments, but they're mostly because, <laughs> mostly because Bill's in the scene. <laughs> it's a 30 minute show, though, right? Uh, no, it was an hour. It was an hour. Or was okay. it 30 minutes? You may be right. Was it 30 minutes? That's crazy. If that's true, because there were only 14 total ever made. That is just so tiny. Yeah, let's see here. I think that was always um, things. Things it was nominated American for. American teen comedy drama series is comedy how comedy drama. Yeah. <laughs> At least they didn't use dramedy. Oh, good lord, no. Uh, 18 episodes were completed. Um, 18, that's it. Yeah. That's too bad. That show was so funny. 44 minutes, so there was an hour long, yeah. There was an hour, okay. So it did, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't totally count. Okay, fine. But I think if the question is that, and if you hold a gun to my head. <laughs> um, you're not taking a show that there's only 18 episodes of to a desert island. It's so good, though. I never get bored of it. All right, all right, fine. See, I think I get bored of Lost is the problem. Well, yeah, but and, and the same, and the problem with that is again, there's only six seasons, so um, I you'd want to Friday Night long. Lights. I might take. Oh, that's not bad. FNL is so good, mm-hmm. and uh, people who don't see it because they think it's about football, you you're you're lame. It's so good. <laughs> it's not what about kind of f- idiot. Are you? <laughs> well, it's not really about football though. That's what's funny about it. Mm-hmm. Is it kind of is, but isn't. It's more like it's like saying Star Wars is about space. Right, it's right. the space they live in, but there's so much going on in that space. Uh, all right, I think that's it for now. We'll uh, save some of these for next week and new ones that come in. TMS or Ask TMS is the uh, is the thinking, hashtag. Me do. The what now? The who? You're making me do a lot of thinking, Scott. Oh, I don't like doing that because one day you're going to need to drink that all away with some beer with Corinne, and that'll be soon. When is that? <laughs> next week? Next next weekend? It's no. A week from yeah, week from tomorrow. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. Week from Saturday. Week from Saturday. Up. That's right. Yes. So, uh, you yeah. know what? Sign me up. Well, we'll talk to Corinne, but I say, what? you guys pick the game. You guys pick the, the hour. I have 50 bucks that says Corinne says it's no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure of it. She'll be completely fine with it. Because that's Corinne. That's who she is. That's how she do. She's great. Can I do it on uh, PS4? Do you uh, like a Twitch game on there? Or sure. Or why not? I don't, on the PC? S- I don't think it matters. Does it? Okay. shouldn't matter. If we can stream it, it should be fine. Sure. I think uh, Accuzod's just hosting a bunch of Twitch streams and putting them in a... I don't know. I, that, that, that I don't know, but we could find out. Okay. You could play right. a little of your Destiny there, a little Destiny game there. I could, yes. Uh, thank you all for being on the show today. Ask TMS is that hashtag. The morning stream at gmail.com is the email address. As always, support us at our Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash TMS. Our website is frogpants.com slash TMS. And follow me and Brian and the show on Twitter. Brian's at Coverville. I'm at Scott Johnson. Someone just pinged us. Oh. Wasn't uh, me. I didn't hear anything. And morning stream. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was this. That's weird. Uh, and that is it, isn't it? That's it. We have a new That's show it. on Monday, so just come back for that. We'll have more stuff to say then. Okay, just calm down, you bunch of babies. Brian is going <laughs> to now play a song, and I don't know even what the hell it is. Well, on the whole, it's a Metallica cover. Yeah. If you're put a gun to my head, then that's what we're going to play. All right. Uh, hi, Stewie and Bertram. Yes. I know this is a tad self-centered, but I'd like to request a song to celebrate my 32nd anim of existence in the universe. Whoa. Any cover of a Metallica song would be awesome. I'm sure Brian will steer us all in the right direction as ever. Love the show, though. Matt from Nottingham in that there, England. Nice. So here you go. More UK. All right. Um, this is a cover. This is fantastic. I love this. And I love the band name, too, now that I'm looking at it again. Uh, this is a cover of the Metallica song, Battery came out on an album last year called uh, Pop Scotch. Um, a few covers on there. And the band is called Driving Miss Satan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All kinds of good right there. Now, Miss uh, Satan, you just sit back there. Let me drive this car, Miss Satan. I can hear how it so goes now. after I heard that, you know, I was basically looking uh, this morning for Metallica covers, and I came across this. I'm like, wow, what does the original sound like? And I had to go back to the Master of Puppets album to listen to Battery. And holy cow. I mean, it's the same song, but holy cow is a different. I love this. Uh, Battery by Driving Miss Satan. All right. Well, here it is. Oh, wait. It says The Trooper. Is that not right? Uh, we played The Trooper earlier. Did we? Yeah. I'm TB. A... Remember B? Oh, I swapped it. Oh, 
Oh, Scott, B. you even told me. I told you. I told you B. I'm a giant. Bat- battery. Battery. Here it is, everybody. Go charge <laughs> yours. We'll see you on Monday. podcast is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. You dick. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, everyone. How awesome is that song? That was really great. I love that. Yeah. Cutesy yeah, girls singing. Do, love it. They do covers of uh, Killers and Two Minutes to Midnight, Can the... I Play With Madness by Iron Maiden. Hell's Bells by ACDC, South of Heaven by Slayer. And I desire it.